we have some big news to share with you. And we hope that you're going to be excited about it. So we've been working behind the scenes on a new... Good morning. I know we said we were done with the siding. Man, that looks so good. But I lied. We have to do two little triangles, one there and one on the other side. And I want to get that done today while the sun is out. We're supposed to be getting more rain. And also, I made myself my own little problem, and we need to fix it. But for now, let's get set up and get that little bit of siding done. And that'll look so nice, because you know what? That looks so nice right now. Man, the house is looking good. And then we can roof it. All right, now that we've got everything nice and level, we can start working. So don't worry, I didn't just lie to you, I also lied to Gina. She thought we were done with the siding too, and we weren't gonna be working it anymore. But we're gonna get that done this morning. I did remember that the other day after you said that. So, but that just should only be a couple little pieces. Yeah, we gotta do done. both sides though. We'll get that done, and that'll be it for the siding. We have another one of those weird yellow spiders that weighs, that has like the zigzag spider pattern too. Hmm. I wonder what they are. Do you know what kind of spider that is? Let me know. And that is a weird spider web. I know I'm used to seeing what they call, or what we call deck spiders, those big brown ones, but I've never seen them with the yellow and stuff. Nope. So weird. All right, so we gotta cut that angle for the first one. So that plus 13 and a half. And then we're gonna have to start it to match that so that we keep the reveal the same. Oh. All right. What do you have, a, was that another spider? No, it was a hornet's nest that oh. I squashed and killed. Careful. Pretty goopy. Yeah. They are no longer an issue. So the big question here is if we can get this house buttoned up before the shop build starts. Right, because Ken's coming in a couple of days. So we got to get these sides done and then the roof done. So that's can the question. Can we do it? And we have to do a chicken harvesting too. Right, we have a chicken harvest. Let's finish up, button up this house. I would like to get the stuff cleaned up. I don't know if we get that far. No, I am gonna say we won't get everything cleaned up because we gotta finish these two things. We gotta harvest 70 chickens-ish and then Ken will be here, so. We can do it, weather depending. Well, I almost threw away the jig. I'm glad we kept it. Plus 13. Yeah, 42 and a quarter. Okay. Tanner's just over there loving life. Perfect.
the last couple of pieces don't want to go easy. Never do. Do you feel like you're on the Titanic? The Titanic? Yeah, standing at the front of the thing. All right, I'll cut one more. I think I got the right measurement to subtract, so I'll cut a couple of them, leave them long, and then I'll give you the measurements to cut. And then that should be the last one. That should be the last one. So here's hoping we have the right measurements because we have them cut and painted and we just want to put them up there and be done. We'll see in a second if that is going to be the case. How's it coming? It's a coming. Oops. I like it. Your other one looks like it goes down. This one looks like it. Yeah. It's level. Huh. I'll have to stand back and look because this one's too long. Darn it. I got to change the angle. It is off a little bit. Right, that finally did it. So I literally had just put the jigsaw away probably two minutes before. Then he's like, where's my jigsaw? And he needed it. I didn't think we needed it, but he did, so. That's why we don't have anything put away right now. <laughs> as soon as you put it away, you need it. Every time. Nice breeze today. There is. This is the last piece for this side. The last one. What the heck? It doesn't fit? No, it still doesn't fit. So I will have you Cut off that much. All right. I like it. That looks good. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank goodness we got that side done and get the other side done. I'm not gonna say quickly, because I don't wanna jinx it, and then move on. That looks so good. We're gonna shake some of this man glitter off, and I gotta take off and do some errands. We have been working hard behind the scenes on something we're gonna share with you very soon, so stay tuned. All right, you got this? I hope so. All right, I'll be back. Okay. All right, I had to make a new angle on the jig. I think I got to figure it out now. It's hard because the overhang, I have it recessed in, so you can't get a tape measure in there to measure easy. So you kind of have to guess and eyeball, and I think I got it now.
that came out so nice. It's the little things that take a lot of time, but man, is it worth it. Took a lot of time to get those in. They're recessed in to give it kind of more of a shadow effect instead of just having them sitting on the outside. And I wanted to make sure they lined up with all the other courses, but it looks nice. I know some of you guys are getting sick of watching us siding. We're kind of sick of siding too, but it's one of those things. We're gonna be looking at this forever, so we wanted to make sure it's right. This is definitely a siding that takes time very labor intensive but it looks so nice it comes pre-painted so hopefully we don't have to paint this for 20 plus years that's why we picked the siding so time will tell but man i'm loving the looks of it so just when i thought we were done and i didn't have to get back up high we need to take the lift out back and we need to fix the stink pipe i did some research after i did the stink pipe and it was saying the code is you got to be a minimum of six inches above the roof but no more than 12 inches because if you go higher than 12 inches your stink pipe has a chance of freezing up in the winter time letting out all that steam so we're going to cut ours at six inches above the roof line because you're not really going to get any snow up on that peak like that and i don't want our stink pipe freezing up because if the stink pipe freezes up it's going to like build up pressure because we're going to have all of the digestion going on in there and who knows where it will come out. All right, we got it all leveled off. Now we gotta go up and cut off the pipe. I'm not gonna lie, I don't like being up here. That's the roof line. We want to go six inches above that. I'll be glad when this is done. <sighs> Going down. I can breathe better now. Well, I'm glad that's done. I'm a wimp when it comes to being up in the lifts, especially when you're straight up in the air, turned around. I'm like, man, if this thing shuts off or gets stuck, like I'm in a position that would be terrible to get down from if I can't get this lift going. So I don't know. I'm just glad it's done. I was glad when it was done last time, but I'm glad I looked into that and took care of it. I know a lot of you guys say you don't get a rain cap on it, if we get rain in there, it's only gonna be a couple of inches and it's just a two inch hole, so it's not gonna get a lot of rain. And that's all plumb fit, plumbing fittings. It's gonna go into our septic. So if it gets rain in it, it's gonna get rain in it and it's gonna go down out into the septic system. So I'm not worried about a rain cap. We don't have enough area that we're gonna be flooding out anything. So it'll be fine the way it is. And I'd rather have it go up without hitting any obstructions. So. Any vent I've ever seen has never had a rain cap on it. I know that, I think a lot of people from Australia said that where they are, they have rain caps on theirs, but I've never seen that over here in the US. I ended up getting a flat tire last night while I was out and about. You can actually see it, the patch is right here. I ran over something in the road and I could hear it going boom, boom, boom. So me and Olivia pulled over, checked it. There was a bolt that was like this long. It's like a 5 16 bolt and it had like a big rubber nub on it. So every time I was driving on it, it was like bumping up. And I was like, oh, I know I have a tire repair kit and an air compressor at the house. If I can make it home, I can fix it. Well, I got in the truck, continued driving and probably went about another hundred feet. And I heard, Phew! looked in my mirror and I could see the screw or bolt shooting out. If it didn't have that rubber thing on, I think it would have stayed in. And within seconds, my tire pressure light came on said I had 10 PSI. I lowered my mirror down so I could look at my tire and all the air was out. Luckily, there was a better pullover spot. Pulled over, tried getting out my tire because I got a full-size spare tire and you put a little rod in it and crank it down. Well, it was all rusted up. So I couldn't get the spare tire down. Luckily, my friend's wife was driving by, told her husband, he texted me. So thank you, Donnie. He came over, brought me to the house so I could get my tire repair kit. Plugged the tire, aired it up, and then we were good to go. It took us probably about an hour. So so when I got home, I ordered an air compressor and another tire repair kit to keep in the back seat of the truck. It is not fun when you get a flat tire, especially when you can't get your spare tire down. 
I'm gonna have to cut that spare tire down and figure out what I want to do for the holder. The worst part is the truck's not that old. It's a 2018 with 55,000 miles. We live in salt country, so putting all the salt and the chloride on the road really eats up stuff like that and just kind of rusts it out so it doesn't want to work. But uh, that was a pain. Good morning. It is a cloudy morning. I was just checking the weather and the rain's supposed to come any minute. We just got Azalea and Cookie out on pasture. I'm hoping we can get the milking done and maybe I can get all of the other animal feedings done before the rain comes because it's coming. I'm supposed to get like three quarters of an inch of rain today. So it's going to be a soggy one in a little while. Uh, you want your hay? I don't know if you can hear that or not, but I just got back up here with hay and alfalfa and it's already started to rain. So we walked the cows up just in time. This little milk and stanchion is nice on rainy days like today and hot days when the sun's out. Right. Actually sounds nice right now. Nice and relaxing listening to the rain out on pasture. Yeah, I'd say about two gallons of milk. I am going to say that Al is 100% correct. I think it is two gallons, if not a little bit more. You can kind of tell, basically, I'm getting used to knowing by where it's hitting in the bucket, but I think this is definitely a little over two gallons, so. Good morning, ladies. Ready for breakfast? Mm -hmm. Come on in 297 and 293. Yes, I know my funnel could be bigger. That's what we used for when we had the goats. And I do need to upgrade to a bigger one, but I just basically keep an eye on it, fill it up. I know how much I can put in there to fill the jars to the top. And then I switch to a new jar. In the meantime, I label my covers and do all the things at the same time so it all works out. At some point, I'll probably get a bigger one, but right now it just hasn't been a priority, I guess. Two gallons, this one's a little less. I had a little bit of a spillage. But other than that, two gallons. The other day when I was talking about mixing our uh, raw milk with the grain, that's what it looks like. This one sat overnight, so it's a little bit thicker. Usually it's a little bit thinner, but the birds love it. It gives them a lot more protein. It seems like in every meat bird batch, there's always a handful that don't grow as quickly as the rest of them. These five are left over from our last batch and they are putting on some weight nicely now. And that's why they're over here. I wanna get these ones eating and plumped up for us. And they're gonna be ready. We have some big news to share with you. And we hope that you're gonna be excited about it. So we've been working behind the scenes on a new website, some new merch and logos, and a new product. We've been thinking about this for years now, but you guys confirmed that we needed to do this. When we were at the Maine Tractor and Equipment Show in Augusta, Maine, put on by Scotts Recreation, 
all of you that we talked to were like, hey, we wake up, we watch your video, and we drink our morning cup of coffee with you. So you guys inspired the Lumna Acres coffee blends. We have another blend that we've been working on, but we're gonna wait to share that one with you in the next video, and then we'll be launching all of these products on August 8th. And that's when the new website will be coming out with the merch. We've been working with our local roaster to create specialty Lumna Acre blends and the different roasts. Like we have like a light roast here. This is a medium roast, and then our other blend we're working on. So it's been kind of fun. We've tried out quite a few different blends and roasts. So we've been drinking quite a bit of coffee getting the jitters, having fun. And these are the two that are our favorite. And we have one more. And it's been the process, but we've been enjoying it. And we hope you guys will too. We figured this morning we'll show you how we make our cold brew. This time of the year, it's warm. And you always want an iced coffee. And making a cold brew, it's really simple. I'll show you how we do it in a second. But it's nice because you can always have it in the fridge. This is how we keep it. Honestly, cold brew is how I like my coffee most of the time anyway, but. We have that one. And then we have this one. We got quite a bit of coffee going on right now, testing all these out. So this is our cold brew. This is the one we'll be talking about tomorrow. But one of the nice things about doing a cold brew is it's really easy to make an iced coffee and it gives it a lot better flavor. You don't get any of that bitterness, and it's just delicious. So I'll show you how we do it. So we have what they call a rumble jar. So we like to use a lot of half gallon mason jars at our house. And with our cold brew, we like to use a rumble jar. I will link this in our Amazon store if anybody is interested in a rumble jar, or you might already have one. So we just fill this up with coffee, fill this up with water, let it sit. And that's really it. So with the rumble jar and using a half gallon mason jar, we just take the cold brew. So our coffees are gonna be coming in different grinds. The cold brew is gonna be offered in a coarse grind and a whole bean. The coarse grind is nice. You can just go in, scoop it out. So we do two thirds cup in our rumble jar. I like making a mess. It smells good. It does smell good. But if you like whole beans, we'll have whole beans too if you wanna grind them yourself. So then, on the cold brew, I'm just using cold water. You put the lid on, the rumble jar. Mm -hmm. Then we'll stick this in the fridge for 24 hours. You can go 12 to 24 hours. We prefer it sitting for 24 hours. So what we like to do is when our coffee gets about this low, we make a rumble jar full. And that's why I have this one. So this one was made yesterday and I just strained it this morning. So if you're not an iced coffee or a cold brew fan, we have our Homestead Sunrise Blend. This one is for hot coffee. It comes in whole beans, medium grind, and a coarse grind. We prefer the coarse grind ourselves because if we're making hot coffee, we make it in a French press and that really works good for that. We have been working hard behind the scenes to get this up and ready, but we are actually gonna be going live on Tuesday, August 8th. That'll be our launch date for all of the t-shirts and the coffee. So we don't only just have t-shirts, we also have some really nice hoodies as well. And everything we have is in limited quantities. And this is the first time that we're doing this. So this is something we're gonna be working out and trying to figure out. We don't know what exactly that um, you guys want. Right. So we're figuring it out and hopefully that you guys will love the coffees, love our merch. We'll be coming up with new designs and stuff like that. And on the coffee blends, these are locally roasted in our area and they're gonna be fresh limited roasts. So when we get them, we're gonna have a limited quantity and the reason we're doing that is because we wanna make sure we have fresh coffee always to sell. This stuff is gonna be going out as quick as we can get it out. It's gonna be freshly roasted. We don't want it sitting on the shelves for a long time. So that's why we're doing limited release roasts. So when we get them in, we'll let you guys know. And when they're sold out, we'll have to reorder and then just keep letting you guys know. So that way you get a fresh cup of coffee because if you can have a freshly roasted cup of coffee, there's a big difference and it makes it really good. I've always been a coffee drinker. I just love the taste of coffee. So getting into this, 
has been awesome. I honestly never really even drank coffee until Al started getting into the craft specialty blends and stuff like that. And now I love it. Actually, yep. probably too much. <laughs> <laughs> so that being said, Gina's gonna show you how she makes her cold brew. It's delicious. It might not be the healthiest, but I try my best. So I get a little fancy, I guess. So, and you don't have to do this, but it's kind of fun. So just ice in my cup. I'm gonna go ahead and make some sweet cold foam. You can make a simple syrup or you can buy a simple syrup. Um, it's super easy. It's just sugar, water, and then vanilla extract. But I like to use some maple syrup and I just got my cream here and I just kind of eyeball it. There is recipes online if you want more accurate measurements. And then, so basically your cream and then half amount of milk. And shot of your sweetener. If you have one of these fancy frothers, just put it in there. Let it do its thing. You'll see that this like doubles in size, if not triples. Gonna add a little bit of syrup at the bottom. Maybe I have too much sweetener, but this is my fun treat for the day. Put my coffee in. What I've been doing is just adding a little bit of foam now and then give it a shake and then adding some more after. Put my cap on and then give it a nice shake. And then I put my foam on the top. This is really not necessary. It's just fun, a fun treat for me. Put my sip lid on. So good. I've been liking doing this also with our other blend that we'll be sharing in the next video. That wasn't nice of me. I should have made you yours. I know. What the heck? So good. Mm. I actually never even knew anything about cold foam until Al, and then I'm like, well, we can make this ourselves. So we finally figured it out. It's so easy and good, and you don't have to do it. it it's yep. just a fun thing. It's just a fun little treat to put it over the top. Yeah. The cold brew is amazing. It makes it nice and smooth. If you've never had cold brew, you need to try it. And I think a lot of people think making iced coffee at home is hard, but if you do it this way, it's really simple. And there is a ton of other ways that you probably can make it. This is just how we do it. Yep, this is the way we do it. We find it simple, easy, and we always have plenty of coffee on hand to keep us going. Yeah, and it's just fun. You just grab it out of the fridge. You don't have to heat anything up. So the new website will be going live August 8th at 6 a.m. in the morning when our video goes out on Tuesday morning. So you'll be able to buy a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, any of the merch. We'll have some stickers, some pencils. You guys haven't seen them, so there's some new things that you haven't seen yet that'll be on the website, and then you'll be able to purchase all of the coffees. We'll have one more, we'll share that in the next video. And everything is going to be limited release just because we don't know how many to keep on hand being the first time. And the coffee will always be limited as right. well. Yeah. And we might change the quantities depending on how much she can make and how much you guys are looking to get. So if you're looking to get something, you'll probably have to get in there fast because it's limited, but then we'll make adjustments and see how we go from there. We're working on some other t-shirt designs. So our goal is, is maybe once a quarter, every couple of months to come out with some new designs. So we don't just have these, we have new ones always coming. And we'll, we'll just be keeping those limited releases as well. Something fun we've been working on behind the scenes and we are excited to finally be able to share it with you. And we'll share the other coffee blend in the next video. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey. You guys are a huge blessing to us in our homestead and you inspired all of this. So we'll see you guys right back here in the next video.
Bye. Bye.